Hello and welcome to this episode of Point Counterpoint. This is going to be an episode with a slight difference. Uh, instead of taking up burning issues, issues of politics, crime, environment and so on and so forth, we are looking into a subject which of course may not matter to us on a daily basis but is extremely important in the, in the cultural and social development of Goa. And we are talking of films and of IFI which is uh, close to 20 years in the making uh, as far as Goa is concerned. When the International Film Festival of, of India came to Goa way back in uh, 2004, it came with a lot of hope and there were, uh, there were promises made that this would ultimately become a very successful home of the International Film Festival. In some ways perhaps it has been technically speaking. But we are here to discuss and deliberate whether uh, Goa itself has benefited and become uh, a big seat for filmmaking, for filmmakers and film lovers. The idea is to understand whether uh, this entire development of Goa as a, as a film base has been absolutely holistic and widespread. And more importantly, has the local language and the language of Konkani and Marathi to a certain extent, uh, has this uh, genre been uh, promoted and inclu included in the whole ecosystem of the International Film Festival. Of course, there will be so many other strands and branches that we will delve into. But while the IFI is going on here and we are, we are about to hit that landmark of 20, let us see whether uh, this whole uh, concept and the celebration that we uh, seem to enjoy every year with uh, the world coming here, filmmakers and film directors coming here. Of course, there are a lot of pros in it, but we will look at both the, the highlights and perhaps the downfalls. We have with us here uh, some of the best uh, people, most accomplished people who can speak on this uh, subject and, uh, and give us a lot of uh, insights and, and hindsights. Uh, on my left is Minakshi Martins, doesn't need any introduction, very acclaimed actor, uh, deeply involved in other matters of Goa, social activist, uh, and of course has been uh, part of the film fraternity uh, for as long as any of us can remember. Uh, on my right is uh, Lakshmikant Shedgaonkar, another uh, one of Goa's best uh, known uh, filmmakers, directors, screenwriters and, and what have you, uh, very, very uh, successful, awarded. Uh, with uh, national awards uh, for his uh, first film seaside story grand jury prize in los angeles and so on and so forth uh, the list goes on so uh, we have two very acclaimed people on either side and on my extreme right is uh, sachin chate one of the most uh, uh, insightful uh, film critics writers curators uh, and there are so many hats that i run out of uh, uh, stuff to say. I'll start with uh, Minakshi. Minakshi, I don't have a specific question, but if you could just kind of delve a little bit on these 20 years and how it has been and whether we have uh, achieved much. Yeah, see, uh, I mean, I have been uh, associated uh, with uh, IFI because my my very first film, uh, hmm. Gauri, was in the panorama section at IFI in, in 1994. Right, way back. So, yeah, yeah hmm. it was way back. Hmm. So, uh, following that, along with my friends from FTI, I have been like jumping cities, you know, uh, visiting IFIs hmm. all over the place, Delhi, hmm. Bombay, Bangalore. And when it came to go, I was so happy because now if he was in my backyard, you know, mm. like you don't have to travel, you don't have to sacrifice. Correct. But uh, unfortunately, the very first year, I think uh, something uh, got amiss and nobody remembered the artists in Goa. So none of us were invited and we were not even allowed inside. This was in 2004? Yeah. Okay. And so we thought, Ki, Are, we are the artists of Goa, you know, we will have an easy entry there, but we were blocked by the police. So uh, we didn't have uh, the know-how of the system of going and getting invitations for yourself. Mm. Mm. You know, that is, the, uh, an artist has some kind of a self-esteem and doesn't go down uh, that, uh, that, you know, route, rabbit yes, hole. Yes, yes. So, mm. uh, yeah, the first, if he was a little difficult for us, so we had some journalist friends, and, uh, 
like uh, Sachin would know, <laughs> who were appalled uh, that we were just like you no know, stranded outside, and they took us mm. in, and mm. we managed to see some films. Mm. Uh, I think the, the Goans just went on a in, on a tangent. You know, like uh, with all these delusional ideas and grandiosity mm. and uh, the grandeur of the film festival itself. Mm. In the first few years, it was like a mela. Mm. No, right. We had uh, nail painters outside and parrots telling you correct. horoscopes correct, and, correct. Uh, you know, the traffic jams and... Uh, it was a big festival, not just like a film a, festival. It, yes. it, was a, yes. it was a Zatra kind yes, of a thing. Yes, yes. But we evolved and I think over the last 19 years, mm. we have now made some sense of the original concept of what uh, international film festival ought to have been mm -hmm. you know though i can't say that we have actually achieved all that but the the master classes are, uh, are the great and greatest boons right. uh, for the efi and right. i think myself personally have gained a lot through that mm. uh, Bab, just a quick uh, question here uh, do you think Goa itself has benefited. I'm not only talking about Konkani films, which we will of course touch upon in detail, but by and large, is this home of Ifi tag? How beneficial has this been to Goa? Well, I really don't think it has really helped Goa in that way. I mean, mm. in terms of uh, finances or mm. in terms of the getting the peaks that Goa would otherwise get mm. in a touristic space. Mm. I think uh, what has happened is when if he came to Goa, mm. actually if he had no other place to go, mm. in Kerala there is already one festival, in mm. Mumbai there was a festival, right. so there was no space for I international festival to you know mount and you know uh, start mm. off. Mm. So during Pajikas time then he shifted uh, uh, if he to mm. Goa and then we thought there might be some movement in the film culture, mm. like you know uh, we thought that we instead of making one or two films probably go and filmmakers will make 8 to 10 film by the end of like 10 years or 12 years. Right. And that didn't happen because Goa never had film culture as such. Mm. People were not really interested in watching films. Mm. They were watching films but like they were going to some Inox or some theatre mm. where there is some mainstream commercial films. Mm. But there was no film literacy per se. Mm. So we were yeah. thinking that probably mm. that will change and mm. we will be able to make more films. Right. So the basic uh, idea of the uh, government to just have, a, have an event and uh, keep away from the things which are of prime importance. Mm. Like for example, you know, uh, uh, increasing the literacy of the people, right. or having film clubs, or uh, giving support to film productions. Mm. That didn't happen, mm. and that is the reason why now <coughs> people don't associate. They don't connect to Ifi. Mm. That connection has to be on a very primary level. Right. See, when I become a part of a film film uh, production, mm. then I get connected to it. Mm. If I am not connected to it, for me it's only an event. So now what the state of uh, IFI is, it has become an event where locals, Goans don't feel connected to. Mm. And now that can only happen if a uh, government works on the other things, keeping literacy, mm. uh, having more film production, supporting them and trying to create interest in the IFI. Otherwise, IFI will become at another event for them. Tell me just a quick question before I go to Sachin. See, when you all you all make films, especially uh, see if he happens in your own state on your own soil, yeah. when Goan filmmakers make films, yeah. do they ever get the feeling that look, one of the reasons I'm making this film is of course it should premiere in Ifi, it should do well in Ifi, it should uh, win awards in Ifi. Does that feeling come to you all at all? It's a, it's a very subjective thing. I mean, right. some might feel that award is very important. Some might feel that yeah. you, know, you have to reach to people, you have mm. to make a film which is... No, do you feel that, that the recognition in Ifi yeah. is something important for a Goan filmmaker? Yeah, also it's very subjective. I mean, mm. For me, it's not important. Like, for right. example, if I have to make a film, I have to make a film. I make a film because I have to say something, I have to communicate something. Right. I make a film and I pass it on to people. Right. Now, whether it is there at Ifi or Mami or in some festival, it is actually immaterial. Right. Because right. that's not the way an artist looks at sure. film per se. Sure. Yeah, it's not sure. a, your appreciation is not that important. It's not right. like a YouTube where you are, uh, you know, you, you feel you get a high because you get so many views. Right. So in cinema, actually, it doesn't happen. I mean, right. We are not interested in, you know, how many views or whether people are watching it or not. Right. Uh, the basic thing is that I have to say something. I said it. Now it's up to you. Whether, where can you connect to it? Do you, do you right. like it? Mm. Do, do you want to give views or not? It's mm. up to the audience. Right. So personally, no, I, I, I don't really mm. care for uh, mm. things like this. Right. I'll just come back on this. Sachin, uh, see, the thing is, when when if he started, you correct me if I'm wrong, because you're much more uh, involved in this. Uh, there were certain intentions in the sense that there could be many, some of what Pinakshi said, some of it which he said and all that. Now one gets the feeling and, you know, that it has ultimately become just a big, big tamasha. 
in the sense that anything goes. It's, it's become an event more than a more than a serious film festival. Now, if that that is true, then what are the reasons for it? And if that is not not true, then what is the reality? Uh, I mean, just to quickly rewind, what yeah. you said is absolutely correct. Right. Is mm. most of the film festivals around the world have mm. an identity of the city. Right. So you have a Berlin Film Festival, you mm. have a Cannes Film Festival, the biggest mm. festival in France. Mm. You have a Toronto Film Festival, or whether it's a Venice Film Festival, mm. Busan. Right. All of them they are by the city. City, correct. So till then, if it was a traveling festival, so right. they thought, why not give it an identity? So right. now it is called International Film Festival of India, comma Goa. Goa. Mm. So mm. that's how it goes. Mm. So the idea was a good one to do something on the lines of. You know the kind of interest that a Busan generates. Now Busan started in '96, right? And if he's in '52, mm. so you know there is no comparison in terms of time back mm. there. Mm. But now Busan has leapfrogged way ahead. Mm. There are a couple of other festivals which have come up in five or six years in Asia. Mm. One is the Pingyao Festival in China, mm. and the other is the Red Sea Festival in Saudi Arabia. Mm. Red Sea is probably celebrating the fourth edition now. Right. But yet they have already gone ahead of others mm. because there is a certain focus on how the festival should run. Mm. Get good quality films. Mm. Get good quality delegates. That mm. is the absolute primary focus. Mm. If he somehow, you know, in twenty years, it's pretty much. Going round and round in circles, dragging along is dragging along. Right. Then either the number mm. of delegates have increased, mm. neither the quality of films has superiorly increased, mm. and neither has the image of the festival, you know, become like great that okay, I want to premiere my film here. Mm. Because how many great films premiere here at Ifi? Mm. Hardly any. We do get films from here and there, mm. and many second tier ones. Mm. So mind you, but which is still good enough for a delegate, You're right? Uh, you know, because you mm. get to see the kind of cinema which you will not get to see otherwise. Right. Right. So from that point of view, I mean, mm. uh, it's a great boon for delegates. Mm. No matter what you get, mm. you have 250, 300 films. Mm. So there is enough to choose from every right. time. Right. So from a delegate's point of view, it is okay, okay. Mm. But has it gone to the next level? No. Mm. I mean, there are not many things one can put down on paper, say that what are the improvements from 2004 to 2023. This is the right. 20th edition, by the right. way. Right. Uh, even during COVID times, we did two editions in one year. Right. So right. it is the 20th edition. Okay. Mm. Uh, so what? So 19 years, 20th edition, that way. In that yeah, sense. 19 years, 20th edition. Ah, yeah, because right, the first edition right. was in 2004 itself. Right. So what are the improvements if one were to put down? Mm, not a lot. Hmm. And primarily the reason I would say, as Derek Malcolm, hmm. uh, who was a film critic for the Guardian, who passed That's away it. earlier this yeah. year, hmm. he was a regular at IFI and at India. Hmm. As he himself said, I'm an old hand at India. Hmm. Uh, one of the things he specialized is in the films of Adur Gopalakrishna. Hmm. Hmm. You know, so he was that. For Passionate new Indian films right. that well, right. so he is on record saying I had interviewed him seven eight years ago. Mm. He's saying if he's the only festival in the world, and he's the man who's travelled and seen practically every festival in the world, if he's the only festival in the world which is run by bureaucrats, which right. is absolutely true. Right. So you know, right. even at the helm of affairs, you need. I mean, you could have a good administrator in mm. place, mm. but you need somebody who has a passion for cinema. Right. From top to down, I mean, you know, if you go to see any festival in the world, they mm. are run by people who know their cinema, the back of their hand. Right. Which has not happened with Ifi, and I think that's one of the primary reasons why it is going around in circles. Mm. And in fact, in 2009, mm. there was one committee which was formed mm. under uh, Kamla Hassan. Mm. He was the head of that committee. I mm. was also fortunately be a part of that committee. Mm. And that had given a recommendation mm. that Ifi should be run by a print professional, mm. and that person should have been, been given a charge for at least for 10 years, mm. so that it, he can decide his own team, right. and it can be run like an independent festival. But at what so level? At the DFF level or here? No, at the government, at the ministry level, not Goa level. Right. This was the Ministry of Information right. Broadcasting right. Committee, sure, sure. and Correct. they had made a report also. At the DFF level, you mean? Yeah, yeah. no, uh, Ministry of Information right, Broadcasting. Right, right, DFF right. came even above that. Yeah, oh, okay. Above DF, that. Right. So the committee had given a report that there has to be a secretary in Goa, and there'll be one festival director will be appointed, and who will take care of all the administrative part, and it will be. An Do we have a festival director here at all? No, we don't. Yeah. No, uh, uh, there is a festival director. Technically, yeah. there is, but he's uh, a bureaucrat, and right. after every two, two years, the new bureaucrat comes. The DFF guy who comes. No, the DFF is not there anymore. So it's NFDC now. See earlier. The, okay. the, the structure was such. Yeah, can you just explain the yeah, structure? Yeah, I'll explain the structure. Earlier yeah. it was like this that DFF used to organize the festival right. and ESG was the local host. Right. And there was a um, MOU between the two. Right. Now DFF is out and ESG still remains the event manager. Right. And now NFDC has taken over. Right. Now NFDC is based in Mumbai, so they have access to entire Bollywood. Right. And you know, see, there is one more yeah. difference which I have seen. Right. Uh, NFDC has access to Bollywood and DFF had access to a lot of South Indian people. So right. if you see the earlier films, like, right. uh, like yeah. five years before, there were a lot of South Indian films, yeah, there were Bengali films, right. there were uh, you know uh, Telugu yeah. films. Now you'll only see Hindi films. Because this is one the thing is, you know, it, yeah. uh, it's boiled down to this that who yeah. takes the decisions. Yeah, right. So now NFDC takes the decision, 
which is based in Mumbai, Correct. and they have an access to Bollywood. So, so that's your yeah. question. So, there is a festival director, but it's hmm. always a bureaucrat, Correct. and sometimes they change every year. Right. So, at least last three years, we've had three different, uh, you know, festival right. directors in right. that sense. Yeah, uh, Lashwikant Babu, you're you are talking about the change that has happened in, uh, you know, in the entire FE after the NMDC and the DFF switch has happened. Yeah, no, that has come. The NFC has come last year. Right. Before that, it was with the uh, DFF. Right. Now DFF is uh, defunct. Now NFDC is the whole and soul. Right. So they will decide what is going to happen with the FE. Right. So now NFDC also right now has an MD, mm. but again MD is a bureaucrat. Mm. And how will he run a film festival? Mm. So the, the idea is to have a director who is going to run a film festival who has experience in the international film circuit. Right. And not just a bureaucrat who will just manage the show. Correct. No, correct. but on, on on many occasions, even earlier, I noticed that the people who came, uh, they had no direct contact with the film world. Yeah. You know, earlier. Yeah. yeah. Earlier even now. Also. Yeah, even now. And yeah. now though definitely. Yeah. Hmm. But earlier also, they were just in awe of the whole uh, world of cinema. Yeah. You know, and they got influenced more by the popularity of certain figures and, you know, certain things. Yeah. Like Sachin just said that there are so many international legends that come down here and which they know nothing about. And uh, there is no attempt made to introduce them to, say, students or, you know, announce their arrival mm. or mm. Uh, to put them up so that we can, you know, understand the uh, whole sure. effect because they have no experience of the cinema. Mm. And mm. that right. is a must. They have to be. You know, that, that, that is something that was essential. Correct. Uh, uh, we are joined by uh, Tapan Acharya. Uh, welcome. Tapan, uh, as somebody who uh, I remember who walked the red carpet in 2004, you've also seen it all. Uh, over the years, and we've been, we've been talking about how whether, whether if he has uh, uh, lived up to his reputation or has it degenerated as a, as a film festival. What are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are very uh, much like the festival in mm. terms of quality of the cinema, international quality of the cinema. I've been just uh, going through, there mm. have been ups and downs every year, in, like as rightly said, uh, in the discussion when I was joining mm. in, as mm. rightly said, every two years or every one year, there is a bureaucratic shift. Mm. And with the bureaucratic shift, it's a vision of the bureaucrat who comes in the place, takes it up or drops it. Mm. And with that, we see so many things happening, ups, ups and downs happening in the film. Right? It's been, uh, I think, 20th EFI I've been mm. seeing in Goa, right? Mm. We are mm. looking forward uh, mm. for the yeah. 20th EFI yeah. in this coming years. We have seen the opening and now we are looking forward for the closing and in between the whole quality of cinema. This year, I feel the quality of cinemas, the selection of cinemas is good as mm. not, which was not there last year. Mm. Previous to that, it was, they were trying to combine it on hybrid mode, if I'm not wrong. Mm. So taking into all this consideration, at a stage, hmm. I also saw the International Film Festival becoming into Bollywood Festival. I am hmm. hmm. being precise hmm. saying Bollywood Festival, not Indian Film Festival. Also, it was Bollywood centric. They forgot about their exist industry in Goa. They forgot the industry that exists in South. They forgot the industry that exists in Punjab. They forgot the industry that exists in North no, East Are you part. noticing it only this year or in the last two, three no, years? No, last few years back I'm right. talking about. Right, right. So, yes. this year at least there is a blend balance of international selection of cinemas. When we say international festival, mm. there has to be an international flavor to the cinema. Right. Taking into consideration, we, the Goan fraternity mm. who are present here, should have a specific arena so as to showcase being the host state sh should have a specific arena which is to be marked upon we have mm. a special section mm. wherein there are few selected cinemas which they try to showcase right. in a particular parameters they try to push it out mm. but that's very selective mm. over a period of years some there are years wherein it has happened there are some years where it has not happened there are years when the fraternities also had to stay out <laughs> Right. Not getting the passes inside. Correct. I mean, actually mentioned it. Uh, uh, Sachin, since you, you will be leaving early, I'll just direct a few quick questions to you sure. to get the maximum out of your presence. Of course, I'll be here. Sachin, see, the thing is, taking off uh, from what both Pinakshi and Tapan also said, uh, if we can focus a little bit on the uh, strength of Konkani films, has that strength being enhanced because of if he, what is the space and the, and the uh, incentive given to uh, Konkani filmmakers? Uh, uh, if you can just look, you know, dig deep into the Konkani landscape and how has it got 
reflected and enhanced because of this. Uh, yeah, I think there are different different boxes. Here. Yes, uh, there yes. is no one single box where right. everything fits in. Right. Uh, Konkani cinema is something which the state needs to promote. Right. Like any small state, whether it's northeast or any other place, we are not as big as a uh, Tamil Nadu or uh, Kerala or you know other states where mm. we can sustain on our own. Right. So the government has to promote Konkani cinema mm. at least in financially. Right. Because there is no way Konkani film can recover that much money. Mm. They might be the odd film. But you can't have every company film recovering money. So hence the state has to support it. Mm. Now the film finance scheme as we all know 2017-16 was the last time money was disbursed. Right. So last seven years nobody has got any money. Right. So that's to start with. Right. Now what have company filmmakers gained from IFI? Mm. It's up to them to make the best of it because right. you have inter international cinema that is being showcased. So it's up to you to go and gain that knowledge. Mm. You know there's only so much the state can do. Uh, they can't bring the film to your house. So you have to go and make the best of it. So that's why there are different different boxes. But here. what the state can do, see for instance what happens is why are Bengali films so popular? The issue is that Bengal, Bengal also has a great film culture. Yes. But at the end of the day this ecosystem, whether the film fraternity, the, the government, whoever has to do, there's a lot of uh, yeah, highlighting so of this. Yeah. So, the, so again as I said, you know, mm. For that to promote film culture, uh, so I run a film club here, probably yes, you know, yes, where we have yes, screenings every Thursday. Yes, yes. Uh, sadly, unfortunately, I don't see too many fraternity people coming there throughout the year. Hmm. I can understand the odd week, the hmm. odd month, you might miss out. Right. So, what more do you want the government to do? I hmm. mean, I'm playing <laughs> devil's sure, advocate sure, from both correct. sides. Sure, I would like to push it some on the other side also. I'm. Uh, I would like to put this fact also. It's the audience taste also. I don't say, I mean, the audience, I mean, when I say the diaspora, Konkani diaspora has to come forward themselves to support the film apart from government support. Yes, is required at this hour because the industry is going downwards. Konkani film industry is going downward, not in terms of anything else. We have quality cinema. Hmm. We are doing quality cinema. We are have quality actors. We have quality technicians. There is third aspect what I want to put, put it to yeah. this forum. Come on, come on, just come back to that. Yeah, yeah. This is a good point. I'll just uh, take, uh, actually your quick thing on this, on the Konkani part. Then I'll come back on this. Uh, yeah, uh, government can just do um, that much. Mm. Like Maharashtra gives uh, subsidy, Kerala gives a subsidy. Mm. But that subsidy is a very tiny amount compared to what is required in making Also what Sachin sense. said that from 2017 disbursements, disbursements have not been made. Yes, unfortunately I am not on uh, ESG. No, 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 no I can tell you that, forget about disbursements. Uh, uh, 2016 they call for application hmm. and those files are with the information department. And 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 they have not even asked for applications. It is in such a bad state. Hmm. ESG, Mm. I mean, it becomes active only during the International Film Festival of India. They don't understand the importance of, uh, you know, the film production in this state. Goa mm. Film Festival has not happened for last so many years. Mm. 2018 was I mean, the last yeah. time yeah. it happened. The Goa Film Festival. And like yeah. for example, Goa Street and, and Film Fund, like for a letter, she just uh, spoke about Kerala. In Maharashtra, Karnataka, all MP, UP, all the states, they have their film finance schemes. Yes. They have film funds. And you know, Goa, Goa only spends 2 crore rupees per year. Technically, they spend 2 crore, which is the lowest of all. Hmm. Considering all the state, this is the lowest, and that too, even that six seven happened. years, you are not, uh, you know, giving money to the industry. How the industry will bloom, Correct. and how do you expect professionals to come in Goa? Actors, no, how will they? Uh, I mean, actors, directors, so technicians. Exactly what I mean that there are multiple industry issues never, here. You know, flourishes. Some are linked to IFI, some are not linked to IFI at all. Yeah, like the I mean, you expect has nothing to do with IFI. The nothing, government nothing to do basically nothing expects. To do with IFI. Right. But uh, see, uh, what uh, one thing I would yeah. like to uh, say to you is um, what I have been grievances everywhere, th those are my personal grievances. Mm. We have these committees and for some reason on most of the committees, the knowledgeable relevant people are not on it. Mm. Yeah. You know, people who have worked hard for that particular subject, may, yeah. may, may it be anything, whether yeah. it is ESU or whether it is mm. Women's Commission, yeah. they, they are clueless people. Mm. So you go there and you sit there and uh, like there are two or three people who are not related to the film industry making the decisions. Mm. Okay, the same thing happens on the other committees also I think. And uh, my question was always this, like when I was on the committee, uh, Mr. Parikar told me, then somebody said that, you know, she has to first study to speak. She's the one who studies before she speaks. Mm. And that's how after a meeting or two, I studied the whole subject and I spoke. And that's how I think the 2017, uh, you know, the, the right. finances uh, files mm. got pushed. Mm. Uh, also appointment of a, a permanent uh, CEO or whatever that is, mm. Uh, mm. MD or something. Mm. 
uh, that was done. That was also changing every year. And then there was only four months gap where the person mm. was taking over and that person was clueless. Actually, you know? that still continues because still I think continue. this year we have the third CEO in the last one year mm. at ESG. So mm. Yeah, that's an okay. IS office. Yeah, but the right. most important yeah. thing is like this, like governing council mm. or the uh, general council, there should be people from the film fraternity. Correct. Absolutely. I agree. At least I agree. Half of them I should agree. be from the film fraternity. Otherwise, how will they, you know, uh, contribute to the cinema? How will they contribute to IFI? I agree. You need to so have people uh, from the film industry, thing which I they don't have right now. The, the latest list which we have, hmm. none of them is from the film industry. Latest list of, the, latest of, list the, of uh, the council, the, the council. council. Okay. None oh. of them is from. The, not a single producer. Not a single director. Then how will you expect that you know, the industry will flourish and people will make cinema and then, then they will get you awards and then you will push into panorama? I mean, that is not Lakshmi possible. Khan, when that uh, ESG panel at the council was announced, we were shocked because I was on the council for the, the prior six years yeah. that none of us were repeated. So there was no continuity to the, and they wouldn't have known anything about what we had done. To make matters worse, the hard drives were lost. So they were like so much of money that was due to people and the new uh, people did not know anything about it. So I had to coordinate with Manoj to find out what had happened and what money was due to who. But there were no papers. There was no record anyway. So we spoke to the, uh, I called up the, mm. the vice chairperson and I told him, why don't we have a meeting where we have a formal handing over to you mm. so that you know what it is that we had been doing. Correct. So we had a tea party. In fact, in fact, in we went, we had so tea. What you did in, in the fact, tea party? In 2018, <laughs> in 2018, Mr. Parikar had constituted a committee to mm. look into the film finance scheme mm. because the current scheme has its pros and its cons. Uh, currently, they give you 50% or 50 lakhs, whichever is lower if you make a film after you complete the film. Okay. Uh, lots of questions were raised. My simple point is if I have a very young, talented ma young man who studied filmmaking and he has a great subject which screenplay has great potential, he wants to start the film. How will he start in Goa? Right. There is absolutely no avenue whatsoever. Right. right. So there is no seed funding as, it, as There it is was. no seed funding. Right. So what can be done about that? Right. You know, so things like that were taken into consideration. Mm. I personally did a lot of hard work trying to find out. There cannot be any perfect scheme. There will always right. be sure. some plus yeah. and minus. Sure. But what is the best possible thing? Mm. You mm. know, can you improve on that? Mm. So mm. I personally done a lot of study from the Northeast, from Karnataka, even spoken to people like Mr. Girish Kasarwali, who is a 14 time national award winner. Yes. What are his views? What best can we do for Goa? But then unfortunately, uh, nothing, uh, Mr. Mm. Barikar was not there and then, you know, uh, nothing happened to and that. And another thing, that scheme, uh, this uh, scheme actually happened during Rani's time, mm. Pratap Singh Rani's time. Mm. After when Digambar Kamat came, he reinvented it, fine. After that, again, Vishnu Vak came as, uh, you know, at Yashi. Yes. Then he again reinvented. Now, this reinvention is a joke. Because the moment the politician says, I am going to reinvent, it's mm. going to take two years. Mm. Which means we are again on the back foot. Right. So this reinventing, I am really like worried of. The moment some politician says, I am going to reinvent, I say, don't worry, I'm going to So that is what happens in the bureaucratic right. sector. So I think they should fix this film finance scheme and try to uh, clear at least, you know, 16, backlog. 17, 18, 19. Yeah. It's a huge backlog. A I don't huge know what backlog. is the government doing. Th th there's a huge backlog. If we, if we calculate seven seven years of backlog, no, six years. Six years seven back. years. Seven, seven years. years 17, backlog. 18, 19, 20, so, 21, 22. So, so technically speaking, 14 crores is due to the fraternity as of now. Yeah, but, 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 that, but, but that's, that's the highest that you're saying. Because that in 18, 19, 20, during Not COVID time, yeah. hardly any films were made. Yeah. So the moment you say 18 crore, they will say from where we'll get 18 crore, yeah. the, this answer they will have. Yeah. But it is not so. We don't make so many films. We all know. We mm. make one, two, three, four films. That's all. No, mm. we and this whole on, amount. On an average, I mean, from the basic statistics, what we see, the quality cinema is four, five. And the whole mass cinema works out to be around 20 cinemas a year. Yeah, but still, the, 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 mm. uh, in, in terms of, uh, uh, as far as money is concerned, it yeah. won't be like like a 2 crore no, per no, year. No, it will no. be much lesser than yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. If the yeah. government cannot invest so 2 into crore in the local film fraternity, so, yes. so 10 crores. So what is the point of having 18 crores? 10 crores. 10 crores. 10 crores. 10 crores. Okay. Uh, Sachin, just quickly uh, shifting tack a little bit. See, the thing you, you mentioned uh, the fact that, that you know, during IFI, even in IFI, there are a large number of very acclaimed actors, directors and others who come. Uh, even though they may not be on absolutely expected lines, but we could do much more. But even then, you will you'll, you'll have a great uh, actor, director yeah. and coming in. Now, th the point here is that, this is what even Lakshmikan and others mentioned. There seems to be a disconnect with the quality of people coming into IFI and the delegates or people in Goa knowing about them. The issue is, is this whole thing of communication and publicity and information, uh, uh, you know, uh, dispersal, as it were. 
that of course leaves a lot to be desired. So the issue here is and how is this actually affecting the whole festival? Don't you think it's you know the whole purpose is defeated when there's something like this? In many ways, yes, I yes. agree with that. Hmm. Uh, let's take a look at how many people have come to Ifi. Right. Somebody like Kim Ki Duk, you know, legendary South Indian director who passed away a couple of years back during COVID. Catherine Deneuve, one of the greatest actresses we have seen from yes. from France. Uh, hmm. So me, Christophe Zanussi was there a couple of years back. Hmm. So there have been a lot of big people coming in. But let's face the facts: a C grade or B grade Bollywood actor gets much more limelight, limelight. than a top, Attention. top 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 director. I'll give right. you a classic example. Hmm. There is a Russian director called Andrei Zaivginsev. I may not be pronouncing the second name correctly, but he's made a film called Elena. Leviathan was nominated for the Oscars. He has made a film called The Return. I am talking about that gentleman. Hmm. Uh, he made Loveless. Hmm. Uh, so he had come to Ifi, and I was very excited to meet him because you know, hmm. big guy, young, hmm. very young, right. but he has made four films, big films. Right. And I went to the media center where there was a press conference, looking for him, and I saw this man who's lost here, and uh, I asked him, "Oh, Mr. You know, Zevgin Sev, whatever." So he said, "Yes, yes." I said, "What happened to your press conference?" "No, no, no, no translator, no translator." He says. So in uh -huh. Goa, they could not find a Russian translator. That's such a tragedy. Yeah, yes. and he was not informed because mm. he was just you mm. know walking around mm. there. So it took me ten minutes to find a Russian there at the venue, mm. and we sat and I had a hearty chat about his films, about other works. But nobody knows that you had this Oscar-nominated director who's made such brilliant films who was there at Ifi. So probably mine was the only story that was published in the whole of media, locally or internationally, I mean nationally, mm. who covered him. But it was not announced that you know this gentleman is coming or hmm. whatever. So even if some good deed happens, it just goes under the radar unnoticed. You are you are talking about the uh, Turkish director who is going to be here. No. Yes, uh, no. Uh, no. Russian director. Russian. No. That was the Russian no. one. No. 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 At this CV, today we have Nuri Bilge Chalyan who is yeah. a who won the Palm d'Or for his film Winter Sleep, who's won the Best Director at Cannes, who's won so many awards. Right. You know, three, monkeys. Um, three, three Monkeys. Three Monkeys. Right. Uzak, you name it. I mean, there once upon a time in Anatolia, hmm. Wild Pear Tree. Hmm. You know, I mean, he's such a big guy. But uh, nowhere, anywhere has it been mentioned in the media yet hmm. that he is coming or he will be coming. Hmm. So I had to find out from sources. Apparently, hmm. he's already in Goa hmm. and he'll be there for the screening. But the point again is that, you know, when you have these big guys, we should, the festival should extract the best out of it rather than you know just focusing on uh, Bollywood. No, but, 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 but we go back to the same thing the fest the festival will only talk about it when there are people at the helm who know about these greats. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, otherwise yeah. otherwise it's becoming more of a glamour centric hmm. not a festival knowledge centric. Hmm. Which it yes. is which unfortunately it is. Unfortunately you it know? is. The festival has to be driven in such so a way. It, it, it appears uh, as per the whole things right hmm. now happening it looks like a glamour parade. Hmm. And right. not an intellectual festival, which is knowledge centric, which are otherwise should be like the absolutely. Festival, yeah. The point again is a film festival like Cannes. Hmm. All the stars and directors of the world, they don't want to premiere Cannes because Cannes is glamorous. Glamorous. Hmm. Cannes has become glamorous because it's a good festival. It's the other way around. Right. You know, right. people right. want to go there because it's a good festival, not right. because there's only glamour there. Right. So you do something good, the other things will follow in place. Correct. You cannot push glamour and then expect the festival to be better. Correct. Mirashi, as an actor and with absolute respect and humility towards the names that I'm taking, uh, with no disrespect to them at all. You see, for instance, in this year's Ifi, when the Ifi opened, you had Sunny Deol, Sh Shahid Kapoor, Pankaj Kapoor, Khushbu, Shriya Ghoshal, uh, Shekhar Kapoor, the odd exception, I would say, Sara Ali Khan, Karan Johar, they were all, all there. Again, I'm repeating this with absolute respect towards all of them and their art and all that. But they were gracing the front front rows. As an as an actor, who do you have? I mean, what do you feel? A and B. What is the kind of a mix that you would like there? I'm not saying replace everybody, but w what would have been better, no, so, so, more representative of a film? Yeah. So, so there are so many uh, South Indian actors. Yes. Um, uh, male and female, both. Uh, mm. We have uh, from uh, the Hindi mm. film industry. We are from mm. Goa also. Mm. So many mm. uh, good, uh, you know, level uh, actors who have given their best uh, mm. for cinema and, mm. and even in theatre. Mm. We have Bengali actors and and uh, northeast mm. uh, actors, Punjabi actors, mm. uh, who have won several state awards or even say film fair uh, awards um, for the original cinema, mm. who are never invited. Who never mm. invited. In fact, two three years ago, I think there was this. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm lost for words. But right. this Kerala lady who won the 
the the peacock for the, the golden Ramadha, peacock, the golden golden peacock. peacock for yeah. the the best actor she was just roaming around you know and uh, mm. and I, she reminded me so much of myself when i was younger so i went sat with her and i chatted uh, with her but like i would like to see her and i would like to see many other people who have contributed to the greatness of cinema that uh, that drew us to the the film world mm -hmm. you know i'm a doctor i'm not a professional like uh, mm. you know right. a trained actor or something like that but uh, malayalam cinema is what basically you know drew me into the film circle i would like to see them yes glamour is there i mean if you want to draw crowds at the opening right uh, you know like the opening, yes. opening. Yes, and yes. who are you uh, entertaining at the opening and closing and there the select few where the passes go correct you know correct. we print 5000 passes and we parcel 100 uh, 100 passes uh, in a packet for a particular individual to distribute it so it is a set audience mm -hmm. i have done right. it so i know right. how it works right. you know so right. uh, it is a set audience which uh, has very little we don't go correct i have not attended uh, the opening or the closing mm. since i have stopped being on the esc because as a esc i had to be there as a host correct correct thereafter i need not be there because my presence is not valued correct correct you know so there are people who go there for purpose of entertainment so yeah there should be a balance but we should learn to honor the people who have given good performances either uh, actors directors filmmakers or even producers they also uh, you know put in a lot right. cinematographers and um, the the sound engineers whom we seem to be forgetting you know that the technical people right. we should bring those people correct tapan you had a quick point with okay. due respects to all the names what you have taken i still would like to emphasize my point saying mm. when we are talking about international film festival why are we not even balancing uh, natu natu did was a best for oscars correct so we could have called some of uh, uh, that cast crew that correct, cast correct. crew yeah. you correct. know that was missing so correct. i see this missing mm. with due respects to everyone yeah, sure. we yeah. could also call some international performers mm. looking at the if you want a glamour we are talking about trending songs nowadays why not we call for those some of the international artists so what is the flavor what mm. is the flavor what we are looking for is mm. it international film festival really we are talking about or is it another bollywood film festival we are talking about hmm. again <laughs> let me have one one quick point uh, okay uh, sachin before you leave I, i'll ask you yeah. this and then go to uh, sachin see the thing is again uh, you know you run a film club and you do a, do a lot to promote films uh, what is being done to even see encourage young filmmakers here to kind of do some kind of work that can be showcased maybe maybe in nifty or make sure that all of them are made made delegates they don't have to pay to become delegates ensure that they get some kind of uh, passes and facilities to go and go and watch invite them for the press conferences and for the master classes what how can we make the ecosystem better for go, you know young budding talent in goa in in right. schools Uh, I mean, I also teach at the university and other colleges yes, here yes. about uh, uh, yes. you know, film appreciation and other things. Yes. Uh, with due respect to all the younger generation, I can only say that you can take the horse to the water, right. but you can't make it uh, drink it. Yes. You know? So there can a lot of things can happen. Uh, for example, yeah, but what can we do to take the horse to the water at least? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, there is this 75 creative minds. So there were a couple of Goans uh, this time. Kabir Naik was one of them right. who has been selected for that. Mm -hmm. uh, again, as I said, for the we run the film club. We don't see too many youngsters coming in, mm -hmm. and that's one thing that I regret. Mm -hmm. But uh, I keep sending. mails to all the colleges to all the students mm. we charge them 500 rupees a year mm -hmm. for showing 30 40 films in a year which is you know i mean uh, right. as per the ffsi rules we have to charge some membership right. fees and 500 rupees for the whole year is and you run this film club in uh, in different colleges or, or uh, in central in makinets palace because yeah, you need right. a proper, proper place, uh, yes, enough, yeah. yes so then as in when colleges take initiative mm. to call, invite us to talk about cinema and all we are more than happy mm. uh, to go there mm. but i think to some degree it's the youngsters only and yeah you're right i mean i was also thinking last year we had uh, given a proposal mm. that before if we could go to different colleges mm. and talk to them about cinema itself right you know some kind of a basic Right. film appreciation thing like a crash right. course correct to kind of gear them up for the bigger thing that's coming that's right because many of the international films you go to see they are not the typical bollywood hollywood kind of films right and many of them as i say will go over your head kind of thing right. but for that you need to prepare them and that's right. what film appreciation does right. it just makes you understand uh, things in cinema which is beyond just what you see on the screen uh, right you know right. not just the story ki ye hua ye hua ye hua that's right but correct. to understand cinema in a more different and a deeper manner absolutely so yeah. that kind of encouragement has to be there few colleges have cinema courses now but yeah it can always be made more right uh, 
I guess beyond that, there's only so much one can do. Right, right. Yeah, Kavi, I mean, actually taking off from where uh, Sachin just left off, you had a point to make. Yeah, so uh, we realized that, you know, the film fraternity needs to be encouraged. And uh, what used to happen is uh, they found the fees uh, pretty high. And many people said that, uh, you know, the students itself can't afford the the fees. Mm. So when we were there on ESG, we made it a point to make the entire film fraternity uh, have free passes. I see. So you okay. can go to the counter and we have a film fraternity list and you get an email and you get a WhatsApp also or SMS right. saying that your passes are ready and you have to just go and collect it. You're not charged for it. Right. And of course, booking of the theater, uh, the films and all you have to do online and, and then you can watch films. So we have managed to take the horse to the water. water. Now, <laughs> uh, once you enter the premises, mm. uh, what you watch Right. Is your choice. Right, right, right. And whether you watch. Whether, whether, you, whether you watch. Yeah. Whether you really watch. Whether you take a car and you right. roam around in the campus or you actually watch the films. Correct, correct. See, Lashmi, see, no. the thing is, uh, no. I'll yeah. just come to you. Just this question, yeah. then I'll, I'll come back to you right away. See, the thing is, no, now, you might say this is not directly connected to IFI. But I have a linkage because the more you promote a film culture in a particular place, the yeah. more filmmakers you have, yeah. there will be more films that will be made, yeah. the more films will be showcased. You yeah. may, may have a better chance of Goan films and Konkani films getting into yeah. uh, different festivals including Ifi and all that. Yeah. My question is that this, we go back to the whole aspect of whether there is film culture in Goa or not. Yeah. How do we get another Lakshmi Kant Shedgonkar? How do we get another Minakshi Martis? How do we get another Tapna? You know, in the sense that you know, 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, will we get? And people like you are basically uh, uh, geniuses who've been created in spite of the system. I mean, you all you loved, loved films, got into it, it was sheer passion. Yeah. Now what, what happens is the current generation of people, they have so many other diversions and interests. Yeah. A dedicated focus into into filmmaking may not be there. I mean, you, yeah. there, are, there are better options, quicker options yeah. to, yeah. to, to um, you know, uh, get into fame and money and so on and so forth. Yeah. So my point is, as somebody who uh, is responsible towards the next generation i would assume yeah. what would what would you do to ensure that there are more people like you like pinakshi coming up from goa see uh, i have spoken about this 20 years back also right. which actually made no uh, mm. difference in, mm. in to the government mm. neither to the system here mm. that basically you have to have workshops mm. film appreciation mm. and not just watching the film mm. there used to be a discussion after watching the film Right. That also makes a lot of sense because right. when the director, you interact with the director, people get to know how he has made the film, hmm. why he has made the film, hmm. what are the conscious, subconscious things that which goes into a creative mind hmm. before making a film. Hmm. So that helps a person to create something and that has not been like, you know, I hmm. mean gone hmm. uh, on the years and so hmm. nobody is actually having hmm. Q&A sessions now right. in, uh, in the festival right. and as he, she says, of course there are few passes, passes but do we know whether they are watching the films or not? No. no so they're, they're not. not watching the film. Right. So we are failed, you know, in a way to mm. take them to the theater. Even if you take them to the water, mm. it's not that you have to really, you know, find some way that they actually drink that water. <laughs> so that is <laughs> not to happen. Correct. Now coming back to your question, what yeah. will happen? Mm. Will you have another Lakshmi Khan Shedgaonkar after 10 years now? Mm. See, that's a very tricky thing because mm. for a place like Goa, it's a very small place. Mm. And feature film means a huge budget. Mm. You know, you cannot make a feature film in like lesser budget. You can only make YouTube videos. You can mm. maybe make some short films. Correct. To make a feature film, you need to have a huge budget. Mm. So only when there is some kind of you know uh, financial support That's to the Correct. filmmaker, Correct. that will happen. Correct. And, and the finance uh, is not coming forward. Sponsors no, are not coming see, forward. Sponsors are not coming forward because the government is not stop the funding. Like for example, if today if I go to a financer ask mm. me to fund the film. Mm. Earlier, we used to tell them the government is funding. Government is giving 50% of the funds. Right. So now your is, is just 50% of the rest of the. So people were ready to invest in a project, right. and they were ready to you know take that leap. Okay, let me try because right. if the government is giving 50, I will put my 50, 50, and your film is ready. You still have a you get a company film. Right. Now we are not in that position. Mm. Last seven years, people are just waiting. Producers are not making films. Mm. People who have made film 10 years back, they have not made a second film now mm. because they are worried. And that mm. their money is gone. They don't want to lose the money again. Mm. So I think that system needs to be tightened up. Only if the film fund, fund which is there through Goa Film Finance Scheme, mm. if the government implements it, I'll tell you there'll be six films every year in Goa. I'm yeah. sure. Because the only thing is, there are people, there are writers, there are directors, there are seminar, there are good actors. Right. Why aren't we making the films? So the whole fraternity is getting affected. Because affected. Right. And, and, and then there's so much joblessness has come. And now they will say there's no Goan Film Fraternity. Correct. The time will come and when there are no Konkuni films, they will say, Ki, where is the Kokuni film industry? 
there was one industry we started it we created it we made uh, in 2013 there were seven konkani films in the festival and today you can't even find two films mm. why and they should find the answers to this mm. i think ehg needs to be very proactive the first thing i really feel if they have to do something they have to reinvent this ehg mm. get right people on board get film fraternity on board and just see how it moves it will support if we right it will give a support Absolutely system correct. to international festival of india right so what will happen if there are good konkani films which means you have created konkani audience as well right so that our konkani audience will in a way go to watch international film festival right so right. that is how it's a, it's a it's a chain you can't break that chain you cannot just say go and watch films come to if and watch films no that no. is not going to happen right you have to create right. that structure right tab but you you made a film you acted and all that if you can just take take a little bit of what uh, lakshmi kan said and talk about the whole aspect of funding a film and making a film how difficult was it for you so it's a very difficult process first mm. and foremost thing i would like to tell you putting money from your own pocket mm. and still waiting for mm. the government funds to come mm. the realization of the funds which usually takes a year not year mm. but two years mm. sometimes three years mm. it's a process mm. so with that process taken into consideration i have myself stopped making konkani films to be honest mm. to be honest with mm. you mm. i love to make films mm. i love to act sometimes mm. <laughs> and last month i released my marathi film as mm. a co-producer mm. the film has been completed it's one month and there is a audience mm. there's a radio audience which watches the film mm. why radio audience because in that system there are around 200 300 films coming every year in marathi right there is a audience which is waiting for a film right okay here there are as lakshmikanth ji said there are only for four to five films what we make mm. and the audience is pretty unsure whether the next film is going to come or not come right, yeah. right. so in that whole process the audience mm. is getting into makeshift arrangements right now if you ask me youtube videos are more popular than a konkani feature film mm. lakshmi gan but don't take me wrong no, no, in no, other no. way yeah, yeah, yeah. because mm. we see youtube videos someone doing reels is more popular mm. than a filmmaker right uh, some yeah. so, some insta influencer is popular than a filmmaker why because there's a shift which has happened because there is no investor coming mm. on board the financial support is not coming on board mm. to support and strengthen the konkani film rather a person like me i look at mathematics financial economics i can't always put my money down the drains mm. and mm. wait for something not to happen right. so right. i'll do it once twice but third time i have to be alert i have to right. have my sure. you know yeah. would b- having my course uh, going at home so i have to take care of my bills so at the same time so i'll push in I pushed it for myself to Marathi because the passion never dies. Passion mm. is alive, so mm. I still need to do. And this is very important. What you said mm. is very important. Mm. Migration of local talent. Right. And I have seen this happening not only. Uh, now he just said it. Yeah. Mm. But I have seen many directors who are making Konkani films now they have shifted to making Marathi films. Mm. Many Konkani directors now have shifted making to a film which will be Tamil, Telugu, and Konkani. And so we are see the, uh, business wise it makes sense. But I am very really worried about this because mm. when you don't make Konkani film. How you somehow you take that konkani mm. culture away right. you take our identity away right. and i hope this is not a very conscious effort from the government to stop people making konkani films to stop people writing in konkani or even speak in konkani right and i'm really worried about this that if there is some kind of a mm, thing which is happening why they are consciously not making ko- konkani films not supporting konkani films Mm. and and in uh, though technically uh, on the film finance scheme it is written konkani or marathi oh, films marathi mm. but in goa we have only konkani, konkani films. films there mm. might be one person making konkani films mm. so the moment you stop film finance scheme you stop that scheme which means you are not making konkani films you are not uh, creating konkani audience you don't want people to you know speak konkani or listen konkani and i hope this is not so and the government is not consciously doing this mm. when i see this whole thing of migration of talent for instance even an actor like you and and acting is your passion if there's if there are no no good scripts coming uh, no plots coming uh, and there's no schedule and all that would you rather go and act in other films in other languages which will which gives you that no, satisfaction of course i am actor? doing that right i'm right. right now doing that right. you know right. i mean okay. uh, i did a hindi film last year uh, mm. which is not ready mm. i did one konkani film which was also shot in english so it was a bilingual right. but shot in goa right i did a georgian film right you know right. so if there is no konkani film being made and luckily for me films don't pay my bills right you know right. so films is um, just something that i do Absolutely. because i Absolutely. like Shujaji, doing it. creative artist mm. is mm. a free spirit yeah will go he, anywhere where the spirit takes where he where he is uh, uh, there is appreciation for his art where is appreciation for his creativity he'll go towards that side Correct. it's 
the system what needs to look into the system and uh, hold that uh, creative spirit into correct. your otherwise uh, there'll be migration yeah, otherwise there'll be migration they, they which might happen tap into our talents yeah. correct no? correct we are here he we is are not here. we here. are not lacking into scripts correct. we are not lacking into stories we are correct. not lacking into talent we are not lacking into directors mm. nor we are lacking into post production artists today time lakshmikant ji i would like to make a bold statement where i am coming from right now i attended a meeting of talented artists who are into animations mm. do you know that our goan artist have done vfx for mm. jawan phantom and all this film there are 200 odd guys who are working here in ponda and margaon who are mm. giving this animation support to all international cinemas yes, amazing yes. so we have yeah. this support amazing. system in place amazing. they yeah. are working from here government has not provided them any infrastructure mm. Mm. yes the meeting was to represent this people to the government asking them to do something which government has said will look into the things so this aspect was untouched for a while right. but now the current aspect which is there we have talent we mm. have everything with us mm. it's just binding we need a binding force which is finance right thank uh, you before we went and let's get back to uh, get back to ifi and a few suggestions on what we need to do to make ifi more inclusive and better and uh, in the spirit of what ifi was designed to be so ifi was designed to promote uh, education on uh, of of films mm. and film making and mm. and the various aspects of film film is not just uh, you know a story or uh, like lakshmi khan just said you know it it is a layered it's mm. nuanced mm. and people need to understand that people go to watch a story film is not a story you know it is far beyond that um, international film festival basically has to you know uh, cater to that mm. and also to educate people about what is being served uh, to right, them right right um, people i'm i'm very sorry to say but you know people here come the locals come to watch regional cinema catering to their own languages and they do not go for international uh, cinema, cinema like right. you know like how we do we study the book and if we mark who mark has come who has not right. come make a schedule and used to attend only uh, international cinema neglect the uh, local cinema because we we can catch it up later, later that's right you know right. but international cinema you don't got, get right. to watch right. and right. to learn uh, right. so that has to be nurtured for that the people who are organizing the film festival have to be educated a lot with respect to the film world right 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 you know that right. is what is lacking okay the film about same question what can we do to improve improve ifi and the purpose for which ifi was designed uh ifi should focus on good cinema mm. that is the bottom line right and i think uh, since i have traveled all over the world and attended and represented my film in most of the festivals mm. it is managed by film professionals right yes. so they should just only fund this festival right government of india should fund the festival correct now at the moment government of india and largely goa government funds this festival right so goa government also has a say right which they should exercise and say that it has to be a festival of good cinema and it should be run by a film professional right. there has to be a festival director who will be a person of having a high understanding of cinema mm -hmm. and then only this if he will work, work otherwise it will get lost and it will as you say it will become a bollywood film festival right unfortunately we are uh, we are running out of time but i think the most important takeaway here is that the government of goa should get out of governing the film festival they should just support it fund it but let the professionals take over and do what they do best and i think we've had a very very good good riveting discussion uh we've got into areas which are beyond beyond the film festival as it were but they all connected and i think what is very very important is to go back to the drawing board and ensure that the the proper culture of film making film appreciation uh is taken to its logical level you need to encourage young people and young talent which is obviously there to invest a little bit into their land and and films in their their language uh there is a big concern that the big talent pool which is already there will migrate to to other languages and maybe maybe other other countries as well so the, at the end of the day goa is doing itself great disservice because if you call yourself the home of ifi then the home itself needs to be mended and you need to look into what are the problems there because if there are cobwebs in the home there is no point decking it up once a year and letting the world come in come and see it because what or what glitters is really not glitter because if if it's all about showbiz if it's all about bollywood if it's all about uh, having parties then of course there is a place for that but without the you know the basic home being being clean and bright and inclusive it becomes absolutely meaningless to have film festivals uh, unless the basics are, are are covered and i think i must thank all our panelists including sachin chate who had to leave earlier 
for coming and giving us a lot of insights, thoughts, passions and of course most of them have poured their heart out because uh, behind all this all of them are actually genuine film lovers and filmmakers who would like to see their art grow and prosper and for the next generation to take off from when the, from where they leave off eventually thank you so much